we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, the promise that we receive as much as we love, that this dawn, there's nothing that is mine. So may we offer you everything and to receive everything. May your promise become mine. If we only love God, there is no loss. No matter what happens, the promise that there is no loss, may we and our children all receive this. May I do well and become a patriot. May I do well and become an obedient child. We believe that the word works inside of those who believe. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me, sheep. Because you're always loving yourself, this is why you don't do well. Some people, they're like, oh, I didn't love myself. I always slept at church. Well, then if you truly did that, how much did you love your neighbor? Because loving your neighbor is loving yourself. People who love themselves, they never love their neighbor. Because you love yourself and you don't know, that's why all you receive are disasters and curses. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 10. Let's read that. So if you depart from Christ, it is curses. Why is it you keep departing from Christ and go the way of curses? So in America, some some uh, pastor or evangelist was saying, oh, this pastor who was acting so great in America, they they slandered Pastor Park. And then within one year, they were cast out from their church. And so they realized, oh, it happens exactly according to the Bible. And that's why that person came to the revival. And I said, well, your goal isn't to come to the revival. Your goal should be to go inside of Christ. It's not Pastor Park that saves you. It's Christ, the God's promise that saves us. So why? Why receive curses by slandering others? You know, it, you know, your children end up in drugs or going to prison or receiving the death sentence. Why? Why would that happen to a pastor's children? So here it says it's because you go the way of curses. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 10. Let's read it. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you and want to dis distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. For am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Or am I striving to please men? If I was still trying to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. Amen. So because you're in curses, in your in a in a in a snare and you're not being released you're not being released financially you're not released with peace in your heart you're not released in your health or your children or your family those people who are suffering why why do you just why are you just in these curses it's because you're outside of christ it's here it's saying it's because you're outside of christ so then all you have to do is come inside of christ but you don't so i'll read it Verse 6, so you're called by the grace of Christ. So you have to be clothed by his calling. That's when you're clothed by his election. So you have to be clothed by his calling. That's when you're worthy to be clothed by his election. It's when you're elected that you can go to heaven. That's 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. So why go the way of heaven? hell you say you receive grace but we you can only receive grace by christ not by jesus not by god it's you receive grace by christ so if you're eating yes you can eat without 
cutlery you can eat with your tongue. As long as the food goes inside of your mouth and, and gets past your your throat, you know. So it, here it says you have to receive grace by Christ. John chapter 1 verse 17, you receive grace by Christ. What is receiving grace? It's where you're called by God. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Those who are burdened and laboring, he says, yeah, you're called Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. So if you're not called by Christ, then it's curses. So someone who is cursed, what can they do? So it is by, by the grace of Christ that you're called. So Christ calls, and yet you, are, you so quickly desert him. And so God finds this so strange. Those who are to be ruined, who kill all their children, who end up, doing, who end up ruining themselves and their children who have a bad spousal relationship and ruin their... How can that person say that they're a patriot in our society? God's recorded that it doesn't even make sense, and yet people do this. You know, these people, they say they attend people's and first church. Well, so what if you attend, if you're doing these things? Jesus, out of the 5,000 males, he gets rid of, you know, all the, the riffraff, and he only picked the 12 who hadn't even studied at school. So he did this after vigil, Luke chapter 6, verse 12. So who do I belong to? You know, the, these theories that you've learned, you know, you need to be ashamed, you know, graduating from university. If you graduate from university and you don't even understand this, that's what's shameful. So you pay... You know, you pay all this money to, to study these things. So what does God say here? Let's read verse 6 again. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel. Amen. So what's today's title? Those who are cursed, change to become someone who's blessed. That's what the title is. So if you're receiving curses and you're not doing well, God, he's like, it's so strange. In Christ, you'd be called those who are laboring and a heavy burden. So that's what Christ is. It's to be called. So then it's when you're called, that's when you have worthiness to be elected. That's when you can go to heaven, you can receive blessings. Why do you depart to the curses where your heart's not at peace, you have a bad spouse relationship, you eat up your children, you ruin your own life, and then you have, you know, um, you become senile in your late age and you're lying on the street and no one even looks at you. You know, you're worse than some dog. Why? Why do that? And then you become problematic in society and you end up in some retirement home, you know, using all the taxes of the country. That's what it's saying here. You know, using up all the taxes of other people. You know, is that giving profit to your to your country? So how is it you know this, this, this grace of Christ and then you depart and then you go and hang out with people like this? There are all sorts of idiots. You know, God, when he says you're a beast that he's perishing, you know, how much does God is filled with regret? That's his words of love. He's saying it to you and me. So those people who aren't doing well, why is it I don't do well? It's because of this. So if we just go inside of Christ, we'll be released. Those curses will change to blessings. Verse 7, which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you. These unrighteous people who go into hell. Romans chapter 1. These are filthy people. It's these people that are disturbing you. Those who are perishing, who have demons, they stop you from meeting Christ. And they want to distort the gospel of Christ. Does that mean it's distorted? No. But why go to those places where they lie? Even now you see. You see these idiots who say they're doing Bible study. The Bible is not something that you can study. Let's find 
It says, you can't know this by your wisdom, by your understanding. Let's find 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And yet you say that arrogantly that you're doing Bible study. Where does it say that you should do Bible study? It says to realize. You see these people who do idiotic things. It's these people who sit amongst themselves doing Bible study and doing demon things. And then they go the way of curses. If you just repent, God puts the word inside of us. That's John chapter 8 verse 37. And yet, even though you preach this, you still don't understand. You go the way of curses. You know, when I witness to you, if Bible study worked, I would just look, I would do the 66 books of the Bible, whichever way I please. If you're a demon, that's what you do and you'll be ruined, but not with God. Last night from 10 o'clock, until now, God's maybe, you know, what did he make me do the whole night? If you don't repent, then you should be looking at the word, but he wouldn't let me look at the word. If, if I looked at the word, it'd become blurry. So all I did was repent. And so if he makes my eyes, you know, good, then I can, I read it again. But, oh, well then, why don't I wear glasses? That's my lust. You just do what God tells you to do. Is, is it because Moses didn't have strength that he didn't enter? He passed it on. You know, David, he had all the resources, but he was told not to build the temple and so he passed it on to his son Solomon it's because you do things out of your lust that's what the problem is your lust it even kills others if you do lust then if you follow your lust you, it's suicide because you're killing yourself so if the parents are sinning so that they're killing themselves that's why the children end with suicide so don't suffer inside of inside of these curses today change it to blessings but you don't know how to change it to blessings you just sit there how much do you have to be ruined how much do you have to die to realize and then you say that you're not doing well and then you're praying to god what kind of prayers are they all you have to do is go inside of christ let's read together verse 21 for since in the wisdom of god the world through its wisdom did not come to know god God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Amen. So the worldly wisdom and knowledge, what you understand, you can never know. So how can you do Bible study? Matthew chapter 28, the last verse, what does it say? Verse 19, 20. So to... So first, you have to make disciples. To be a disciple, you have to throw everything away. You have to go inside of Christ. You have to change to God's help in, or, to, in order to throw everything away. And then even after becoming a disciple, then you have to die by baptism. That's when you teach. But then you teach these people who aren't worthy. And then, you know, you, you're not even worthy and you're sitting there wanting to learn. That's why you receive disasters and curses. You go to those churches without Christ. You see what happens with their with their disasters and curses. You see what happens to, to their businesses. And yet here you are still falling asleep. It's so sad. Galatians chapter 1, verse 7. Let's go back. Which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you. They want to ruin you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Why be deceived? Without Christ, you'll go to hell. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. If your spirit doesn't do well, everything doesn't do well. If everything doesn't do well, then you don't even have health. You know, they talk about your spirit doing well for everything to do well. If everything does well, then you'll have health. You know, a lot of people memorize 3 John, verse 2. So if your spirit soul doesn't do well, everything doesn't do well. You don't have good health. That's what it's saying. You know, your actions. You choose the things of curses. Everything that is comfortable for you, that's good for you. If you do, if I did that too, you know, it's been almost 20 years now. God's never given me a time to rest. If I took a year or to rest, no one would say anything. You know, you just have to receive the blessings in front of you. 
if you depart from Christ, then you'll receive curses. But if you change them to blessings, you know, God, He just, he just leaves you alone. So after I preach to you, I just have to leave you alone. But according to your actions, Romans chapter 1, God will repay exactly. So because He will repay, because of that promise of love, if I, you know, because of this promise that there is no loss for us, so you don't come to dawn service looking at Pastor Park. You come to receive help because God's helping you. It's not Pastor Park who helps you. So you may come. Why is it you don't receive help? Because you're outside of Christ. Even now, if your life's not doing well, if you're in curses, come inside of Christ and let's change it to blessings. Is this our men? We all have to receive this. Please, let, we have to surely receive blessings. At this dawn, let's receive those with diseases to be healed, those with problems to receive solutions, to receive the assurance of, of salvation. And this is in Christ. Outside of Christ is curses. But there are bad people who try to distort this. Are these people even men? They're worse than beasts. So, is, so if each one of us receive blessings and our families do well, if our families do well, then what happens to our country? That's being a patriot. Instead of saying to our politicians, you know, to do well, will they have to do the right thing in front of God? For us, we have to do the things to receive blessings. So instead of saying, oh, how much, you know, are you going to give me per month? Who's going to pay for that? It's me that has to pay those taxes. So instead of saying that, According to God's word, we have to take the blessings in front of us. In Christ, it's blessings. Outside, it's curses. So how much have we have we lived a life of receiving curses? Even now, if you're not doing well, you're outside of Christ. It's God who says they're curses, not us. But then these fakes who say, oh, if you depart from our church, so you'll receive curses. Well, yes, it's right, because Christ is the church. But it's not it's not my church. So inside of God, that's what it's saying not to depart from. You know, if Pastor Park's outside of Christ, then it's curses. Inside is blessings. So to make this blessing mine, that is wisdom. So verse 8. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. So Paul, he wrote this inspired by God. So if you say it's Paul who written it, wrote it and you only look at Paul, that's cursed. If you if you say it's, oh, it's Pastor Park who, who talked about the mystery and you only look at Pastor Park, that's curses. We have to only follow after the word. Let's only let's follow this word, which is a way of blessings. From this dawn, let's go inside of Christ. Is this our men? So we have to only receive blessings. No matter what anyone says, there is no lie with God's word. Verse 9, as we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. So what Paul preached to us was, was Christ. After Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Paul wrote this inspired by God, and the only thing he wrote was this mystery of Christ. So if you speak of anything other than this, it's curses. So other than Christ, which is forced, to, other than going out of Christ, which is forced to repentance, other than that, it's curses. So he wrote for, so sorry, so now he says, for am I now seeking to fit? seeking the favor of men are you going to please God so other than serving Christ there is no way to please God Romans chapter 14 verse 18 so if I am conscious of men I'll only use you know good words you know I'll be like oh why should I be talking about curses from from the from you know so that's a dog. If you depart from the faith, you're a dog. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. So then that's why you end up saying dog pig talk. And yet who is it that likes to hear those things? It's Luke chapter 6, verse 26. It's dog pigs who like to listen to that. 
And yet people say that and listen to that. How sad is this? Just because it's the morning and you say, oh, well, we shouldn't wash it then because it's morning. Well, what if all, you know, the, the mice and all these bugs walked all over it during the night? No, we have to wash it. So to wash it, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, the only thing to wash it is with the blood of Christ. How do you get to God? It's by the blood of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. It's by the blood of Christ. It's when you do forced at repentance, that's when you get to go to God. So at this dawn, we have to meet God. So during the night, the sins of our heart and our flesh, all those things that separate us from God. So last night, you brushed your teeth and washed your face. But this morning, all that sweat and, and your mouth, and you have to wash it again. So if we don't even do this, what do you think? What do you say we're doing for God? So even if you don't wash your flesh, you have to at least wash your heart, the sins of your heart and the flesh. But we're not like other religions that are only worried about the externals. But to cleanse our heart and our flesh. So that's when the word comes. God comes. Psalms 119, verse 147. So, for am I now seeking the favor of men or of God, or am I striving to please men? If I was still trying to please men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. You'd be a bond servant of sin. You'd be a fake, a slave of curses. So, which way am I going? Why is it in my life the difficulties aren't being released because it's the way of curses? So then what is it we have to do if we want to escape from curses? It's because I'm outside of Christ, so we have to now go in Christ. So from now, the curses have ended, and now let's go to the way, to the way of blessings. Let's go inside of Christ. Let's live in Christ. So this secret... This secret of where we change our curses to blessings, let's apply it to our life. So when you go out and you have some problem, if, if, if something's not working out, it's because you're outside of Christ. So when you do this, you know what's amazing? If you're doing false day repentance thoroughly and you're in Christ, then you can see the blessings. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15. You can hear the blessings in front of you, but they don't come. If you go inside of an elevator and you only go half in, then you know. Then, if it's if it's strong, then you're going to cut in half. So half. So half of your leg, so half of you is inside the elevator, and the half is. That's that means you have to wash the other side. So when one side doesn't believe properly, the other side suffers so much because you have to wash doubly. That filthy persons, you have to wash for them. But if you don't wash and you say, oh, I only give half, well, then the elevator, you're going to get cut in half. So if you do forced out repentance, if you do according to this word, you see the blessings in front of you and you say, oh, it's going to work. But why doesn't it work? Because the other side's doing something else. And it makes it hard. It ma you makes you suffer. But if both sides are one, how easy is it? So then you just have to get in the elevator and go up. So why is it hard? What is it that your ancestors have done that you meet a spouse like that? But if you just wash, it will work. If you wash with the blood of Christ, it will work. So then the curses will end. And to only receive blessings, let's live each day like this. There is no lie with God's word. Oh, that's why I have to take the sins of others on my cross. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. The blood of Christ forgives everything. That other person, because they're still... You say, oh, it's because they're still an unbeliever. Don't make an excuse. Whatever you see, it's me that has to repent of it. Yes, I have to wash my clothes, but I also wash their clothes. You see their pile of clothes and you're like, oh, I don't know about you. That means that sheet that's been entrusted to you, you're not looking after it faithfully. Even if I have to wash double the washing or even triple, that's being faithful. Oh, this is a towel I used. Okay, that's okay. Oh, that towel you used, or you do it. That means it's never going to get washed. 
That means you're half in the elevator. You know, if you're half on the train and half on the ground, then you're going to be ripped in half. To say that sin is mine. You have to see other people's sins as yours. Instead of grumbling and complaining as your family, to say that sin is mine. Philippians chapter 2 verse 4. So if you repent, it becomes blessings. If you repent of everything, it becomes blessings. May we all receive this blessing. So if something's not working out, it's because you're still outside of Christ. I may have washed, but my family may be outside. So for you to repent of that. And so that's why even that person that you may have met for the first time, if they're, if they're tormenting you, don't curse them. It's for you to repent of that and to receive blessings. So in all things to give thanks and to be victorious. Now there are no curses for us. It's only blessings from today. It's only blessings. Let's, we're going to change everything to blessings. Let's all pray. Father, in order for us to be victorious today, no matter what happens, to change it to blessings, may we obey your amazing promise so that we and our children can receive blessings, so that our whole family can receive blessings. Father God, through me, the, through Jesus Christ, mankind was saved. Well, through me, may my family be saved. May my neighbors be saved. To repent of that sin as mine. To go inside of Christ. To change from curses to blessings. May we live this life. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. So it's when we live like this that we become patriots. Let's repent freely. Let's all go inside of Christ.